Hello and welcome to Kenya School of Technology Studies Unit Introduction to Computing. That is what we are going to cover as per now. My name is Jackson, your instructor. Welcome. Overview Computer Definition. Computer is an automatic machine that works under a set of stored programs. Another definition it is an electronic device that accepts input, processes, and outputs information in the organization for decision making purposes. We have three main basic uh, three main basic activities of the computer and the first one is input, process and output. We also have the fourth one which is now storage. Now let us look at terms used in computer. The first term is input which is key in or enter data in the computer through the use of a keyboard. The other term is storage and the store is making now the data permanent in the computer. The other one is retrieve that is opening or accessing an existing document in the computer. We have data. These are raw materials or basic facts with little meaning at all. The other one is information which has three definitions. The first one is processed data, meaningful data or assembly of data. We also have a soft copy. Soft copy is a document displayed on the screen. Hard copy, a printed document, hardware, physical tangible components of the computer, and the last one, software, set of rules or instructions that govern how the computer operates. Now, let us look at the advantages of a computer. Computers are faster in data processing, Another advantage of the computer is complexity. Computers are capable, are capable of handling complex arithmetic calculation. Another advantage is security, that is through the use of password. The other one is versatility, is the ability of the computer to keep on repeating, processing the same task several times without becoming tired. Another advantage is communication, that is through the use of internet. Another one, entertainment, that is playing games or even listening to the music. And the last one, multitasking, which is the ability of the computer to, pro to process or even execute two different programs at the same time without developing any problem. The other one is now disadvantages of a computer. The first one, machines are very expensive. The other one, reduction of labor force, another one, moral decay or degradation, loss of information in case of failure, and the last one, breaks down easily, and it also causes health hazard, and uh, it also causes eye strain and wrist pain. Those are just but a few disadvantages of the computer-based system. Booting. Booting means switching on or switch on the computer. We have two types of booting. Cold booting is switching on the computer when every device of a computer is completely off. We also have warm booting, which is restarting or resetting the computer. Requirements or elements of a computer system. We have four requirements or elements of a computer system, and these are hardware, software, end user, and peripheral. Hardware. These are physical tangible components of the computer and a very good example of hardware we have keyboard and the mouse. Software, these are a set of rules or instructions that govern how the computer operates, e.g. system software or application software. Ed user, another name for ed user is the library and these are computer operators, those people who work with computers on daily basis. The last one is peripheral which comprises of input output and storage devices system unit or cpu central processing unit is made up of three main elements the first one is control unit which controls or supervises all the computer operations we also have arithmetic logic unit where all computer or mathematical calculations in the computer are carried out in this section also what we call data testing. We also have main memory. 
Main, another name for main memory is primary storage or internal storage. Main memory is classified into two. We have RAM, which is random access memory, and ROM, which is read-only memory. Random, the purpose of random access memory is to hold data either awaiting to be executed by the central processing unit or the processor or holding data awaiting to be taken to its final storage location. ROM, it holds data permanently. Example of data or instructions that are being held in ROM are system programs which are responsible for controlling all the hardware resources of the computer-based system. Computer classification. Computer is classified into four categories. The first one is size, data they process, purpose, and generation. We start with the size. Under size, we have four types of computer. That is supercomputer, mainframe computer, mini computer, and micro computer. Characteristic of supercomputer, it is the fastest and the biggest type of computer. It is also very expensive. Characteristic of mainframe computer. It is also bigger but not than the first one, which is supercomputer. It is also fast and also it has a high storage capacity. We have mini computer. It is big but not than the two above computers, that is supercomputer and mainframe computer. It is also capable of handling multi-programming or even multi-tasking. We have also the last one, microcomputer. Microcomputer is the one that is smallest in size, cheapest of all the others, that is supercomputer, mainframe computer and mini computer. And types of microcomputers are a laptop, desktop computers and PAL computers. Data they process. Under data they process, we have three types of computers. Analog computers and digital computers and hybrid computers. Analog computers, these types of computers are used to measure the physical magnitude. We have digital computers. These are computers that are normally used in commercial industries even for performing arithmetic calculation by use of binary numbers. Hybrid computers. Hybrid computers, they have both characteristic of analog computers and digital computers. Purpose. Under purpose, we have three types of computers. The first one is special purpose computers, general purpose computers, and dedicated computers. Special purpose computers, these computers are, have been designed to perform a specific task only. General purpose computers, they have been designed to perform or to carry out a wide range of tasks. The other one is dedicated computers. These are just the general computers that are also meant to perform as or are limited to one task only, e.g. like word processing. Now we go to the last category of the computer, which is now generation or evolution of computer. We start with the first generation, that is from 1940 to 1958. The first generation was huge in size, it was very expensive, often broke down, slow compared to the first, used vacuum for internal storage capacity, and a very good example of the first, gen of the first generation type of a computer is IBM 650. Advantages of the first generation. It was very fast in calculation during the year days. It had vacuum tube that led to the advent of electronic digital computers. Disadvantages. Its power consumption was very high it was also unreliable, it had limited memory, and produced a lot of heat. 
Now we look at the second generation of computer, that is from 1958 to 1964. This one used transistors for internal operation, had increased storage capacity compared to the first one. Advantages of the second generation type of computer. It was smaller in size compared to the first one. Again, it was less prone to hardware failure. Disadvantages required frequent maintenance and also air conditioning. Now we can look at that generation type of computer that is from 1964 to 1970. This one also used integrated circuits. It was smaller in size. It had also increased storage capacity. Advantages emitted less heat, smaller, emitted less heat. And again, it was also smaller in size. Again, it had low cost maintainers. Disadvantages, they were costly compared to the two above. Now we can look at fourth generation, that is from 1970 to 1989. Used large scale integrated circuits. Again, it had large storage capacity and it was very fast. Advantages, smallest in size, faster in computational, portable because of their size. Another advantage is that it was smaller in size and again it was not also prone to hardware failure and the last one is that it generated less heat. Disadvantages, high technology required for the maintenance or for the manufacture of LSI chips. Fifth generation, the expected activity or the expected output of the fifth generation that was from 1990 to date is to use artificial intelligence. Again, the scientists or researchers are still trying to come up with a, pro, with a computer that can be capable of using the five human senses. Now the last one, we are going to look at the impact of ICT on society. Impact is all about positive or negative effects of ICT or computer-based system. We have around five impacts of ICT on the society. The first one is automated production. The other one is environmental issues. The other one is effects on employment. We also have issues of workers' health. And the last one, which is cultural effects. This course is available at KSTS campus here in Nairobi via online learning at our website that is www.kststudies.net and on your mobile phone you can SMS KSTS to 8554. Register now at Kenya School of Technology Studies building Accra Trade Center here in Nairobi for the floor. Thank you.